Hello everyone, um, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for stopping by. My name is Henry Haight. If you don't already know, I am a multidisciplinary artist. Um, presently right now I am in California. Um, today's video's topic is uh, what an artist does within a day or a typical day, um, which could be a loaded question. So um, I'm gonna show you what I do and hope you uh, find this informative <coughs> and um, enjoy the video. Okay, um, <clears throat> what an artist does in a day. Um, it could be anything, but um, an artist's primary goal uh, within a day is to virtually convey a message or work on a project or something that is virtually um, conveying a message. Um, something that is a, a visual and uh, a work that either they are formatting uh, for a commission, whatever, uh, or just virtually, you know, within their their business um, of 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 art. <laughs> I'm having a brain fart right now, so bear with me. Um, normally, normally, you know, I I have my rituals of how I can conduct uh, a day, um, but it depends on um, my scheduling. Uh, time of year um, and the projects that I have um, in the pipeline. Um, normally I wake up, uh, I do my morning rituals. Uh, I grab some something to eat, have breakfast. Uh, breakfast is the most important meal of the day, kids. Make some phone calls. Is this the cocksucker residence? God damn you, stop calling here. Isn't this 4215 pussy way? You bitch! Now let me check the zip code. 212, fuck you! Uh, emails um, that I need to tend to. Uh, a, a, a lot of emails. Um, essentially, like today, uh, and I can have four or five different conversations from different people, and my my brain and and uh, can get uh, turned to mush because I'm having four or five different conversations, and, and and for the same project, and I could get my wires crossed. So I really have to be careful about making sure um, I'm I'm on the ball. Um, I'm nocturnal by nature, so you know waking up early isn't really uh, one of my favorite things but um, I can do it uh, I have done it but um, normally I, I start with my correspondence and stuff like that if there's any business um, <clears throat> in in terms of sending invoices or uh, you know uh, getting things ready for a, a sh shipping out um, or in one case recently I was speaking to an artist that we both gave work to a gallery that um, has gone AWOL and they have five pieces of mine and um, these are the kind of things that they don't really um, mention in um, social media to, to a certain degree because uh, you know it's, it's not appealing I guess but um, you know, they've sold my work before and uh, they asked me if uh, they were going to start a new space and I said, okay, you know, I thought they were legit. I had no problems with them before and um, I, I know he was having difficulty, uh, this person was having difficulty in the past and um, more, more than anything, you know, 
one of my friends says, oh, Henry, you're too trusting. I'm like, <laughs> ironically, and I'm called Henry Hade. But, um, uh, you know, I, I hope the guy's all right and um, that my work is safe. You know, I'd like to get it back. Uh, but um, sometimes I, when I'm in admin mode in the mornings, I tend to virtually make notes like, okay, this day. I make lots of notes for myself. I make um, audio notes physical notes, but I make notes just so, just so there's a timeline. Um, and right now, although I finished the Huxley show, I am now mapping out and editing a show for September and spent the last uh, two and a half months uh, working on this show. And normally to plan a show could take about, a solo show could take uh, four, four to five months uh, planning and editing. And when I look at the pieces, it's, I'm just, me and the work. I, I don't have an assistant anymore. Um, I, I like working in solitude. Um, and so, as you can see, one of the, I have an underpainting behind me. Um, that will be the big finish of the show. Uh, so there's a, there's a lot of planning and prep that goes involved within the day. Within the day, I start mapping out, you know, what, how am I gonna uh, approach my painting work because I paint, paint again, and then paint some more. I paint a lot. Depending on um, the the mediums that I'm using, uh, this one is oil. And sometimes I, I find that, you know, working in oil sometimes can have a, a negative effect on me because of the, the vapors in the set. Leave it for you. And even when I'm working in a, a ventilated room and I have a fan going on, I can't run it too hot, uh, high because you know if there's any dust mites or anything, I don't want anything touching the canvas to where it gets stuck on to the um, the panels uh, or the canvas itself. Uh, so I, I really try to just make sure you know organize, clean, and try to get some sort of um, organized forming here in in this room um at the moment you know working out of my parents um home is is a bit challenging because uh i'm having to make do with a makeshift room um and you know uh in my studio i could just go willy-nilly and just you know go about it uh and um you know i've seen closer and, and stuff and i can make a bigger mess so I have to be a lot more careful here uh, but <clears throat> right now it's just mapping out and trying to like figure out how I'm gonna edit a show and virtually look keep looking at the work and I pulled some pieces over to the side to say okay these these need a bit of tweaking and this one um, this will be the last piece that I actually work on um, and that'll take me about, I'd say, a month to to, to finish complete, and then, uh, you know, uh, about two and a half days to make the frame, the the tray, uh, floating tray frame. Um, you know, with with these things, uh, when planning a show, uh, I normally have about three three to four pieces that I rotate. So if I'm working in oils, uh, it gives me a couple of days for them to to cure. I, I use liquid, so virtually it gives me time to virtually let that set, start another one, give, rest my eyes on a piece, because I just don't want to just start looking at something again, uh, this is a you again, and um, so I'll, I'll switch it up. But normally I, I kind of like, one one is curing, I guess start to another one, then keep, and then go back and forth. Uh, I do like that because it gives my eyes a, a fresh perspective when I go back to the piece and I can look at it with um, a level head rather than just staring at oh, This one I'll be staring at for a long time. And um, currently right now, one of my pieces, my largest painting is um, in Newcastle Square at John uh, Lewis uh, for Pride Month in their front window. And it's a huge honor um, for the charity campaign, um, uh, U equals U, Eyes Open UK. Uh, 
allowing me to showcase my work there um, uh, for the month. And uh, if, if you're in the Newcastle region, I mean, you happen to see it, you can have a look at it. Uh, <coughs> Uh, or you can follow, see it on my Instagram and um, a few places on Twitter or at Eyes Open UK. Um, and, you know, again, with with projects, uh, especially in the morning, I with my correspondence, there's always certain plans of projects that are going on. So I don't necessarily like to answer my phone when I'm actually working. I tend to leave it alone and just go about my day and my evening. Normally, I will start um, because I help with my mom and look after her, there's several hours and um, after I do my emails and stuff where I wake her up and then I clean the house and uh, give her her meds and anything else. Um, and then I'll probably start my day around 2.30, 3 o'clock. And then I'll probably go till about sometimes 10, 11. Um, lately, it's been going a little later till about, I'll stop at like midnight. And I, t I tend to get a big chunk, a chunk of work done. I take breaks in between. I don't dilly-dally in the sense of, you know, um, playing video games. I'm not a game head or, or, or like, I don't read. And, uh, I do read, but I don't read during my breaks, <laughs> is what I'm saying. Um, because when, when, I, when I tell myself, okay, work, start to paint, create, that's my, my ultimate goal is to work and create and just virtually um, edit and um, observe the work that I'm going on and I tend to be one of these artists that because I paint in a express expressionistic impasto um, action mode I tend to put my emotion within my brushstrokes and stuff and uh, I want to invoke a feeling of, of some sort so th that's between me and and the inanimate the canvas uh, the inanimate object uh, that I'm trying to achieve. So always observing back and forth, back and forth um, can be a little daunting because I, I go by the instinct of what my gut says and what my eyes. Um, I'm trying to make my eyes, hand and gut go all in uniform to where I can say, okay, this is going. Um, normally with with prepping, uh, I already know in my head what, what colors I'm going to use. And with this show that I'm doing at Lauren Powell Projects, uh, I'm using a lot of red uh, because we're essentially, my, my goal is to turn the gallery into a, a red light district. And uh, red is a color of anger, passion, love, um, heat, you know, uh, as well as, you know, the red light district. Historically, you know, they said that you know red lights were easy to conceal balding girls with scabs or venereal diseases and things like that, um, and it it would make a person look a lot younger or less um, a lot more healthier. With you know we are all in red. Uh, it's not that I like something like that, but there's something about that color, um, especially in religious paintings when they show red, um, like hell and heat, fire, uh, and a, a lot of neon. So I tend to stick right now with a particular color palette then uh, clashing with like ice blues, cold blues, baby blues, uh, you know, polar opposites on the color wheel. So when I'm, I'm doing these, I, I do particular, pull out a certain um, color tubes of paint and virtually I, t I start to mix them and um, Virtually, you know, I get my uh, my tear files out or on my computer to virtually have the visuals there. I, I can put something through Photoshop, burn it, do a black and black and white, do the high contrast, so then I can see the difference between hues, gradients, and things like that, and know how I want to approach the the color perspectives on the paintings and the accents um, to to my liking. Um, but that that does take time, and then you know, obviously, I take breaks. Um, but it, uh, right now, it's a lot, a lot of painting. Uh, excuse me, I'm just. Um, uh, when when I um, 
when I'm in, in my time frame, I do actually, I'm in work mode. So like I said, I leave my phone. Um, I don't really answer uh, calls or anything like that. I, I virtually enjoy the time isolated and by myself. Um, you know, being an artist, you do spend a lot of time by yourself. I don't want any distractions. I'll listen to music, podcasts, or audiobooks just in the background, just, you know, noises kind of keep me company. Um, I, when I had uh, my last studio, my dog loved the park that was virtually next to it, which was a deciding factor for me actually getting my studio. And because my dog knew that the, the park was across the street, she didn't like the studio, she wanted to go to the park. So, um, you know, I would make time in the afternoon, like a schedule that she knew, parky park, walkie walkie, and we would go. Um, and you know that was that was nice, but uh, normally when I start the when I punch in, I I'm burning the midnight oil and working to like paint and virtually just on the work that needs to be done. Right now, it's a show. Normally, it would either be a commission or a, a collaborative piece with a, a brand or something. Um, and right now, it's just been this actual show. Uh, before that, it was uh, the Huxley and trying to like a lot of correspondence, me being here and and everything being there and and planning with the organizers of the bar and restaurant and virtually uh, a lot of conversations. Uh, uh, I mean, when you're working in a business, communication is is paramount um, because you you're having a collaboration and it's a collaborative effort. Although you're the showing your work, you kind of want to build a, a, a relationship and, and a working uh, reputation that you're easy to get on with um, and that you can deliver on time. That is essential. So that kind of helps me when I know I'm working. I'm just like, okay, I'm in like beast mode, just go. Uh, then, you know, um, that's not to say that on a day to day basis I'm met with challenges because there are plenty. Um, normally, right now, uh, I can be lazy by nature. I am, oh God, my God, I'm lazy by nature. Uh, but uh, that being said, I um, when I'm in beast mode, it's just like, okay, go, 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 go. Uh, but I, t I tend to try to challenge myself not to be and I check myself on, on my time management, which is crucial. Um, I can tend to overthink things, especially with certain pieces or work why I choose the wrong color and then I can struggle with the piece for a bit. That could be very, very taxing in the studio because there's no one really around to talk to like, hey, what do you think of this color or stuff? Um, because I'm going by my instinct and choices. Um, I think, oh, this color might work and, and complimentary to it. And I'm like, no, it's it's all wrong. And then the, the, the painting goes in a sharp left and I'm like, what, I'm fucking lost now. Um, you know, and you've erased everything. Uh, so I, I tend to virtually, you know, try not to overthink things that, that I know that are going to muddle my work. I, I tend, tend to stick to the notes and, and virtually, um, and sometimes I can fix it. And other times because I'm staggering pieces, I put one piece away, leave it and virtually get on with the others. And then virtually wait or two, two or three days to come back to it and go, oh, okay. Now then I know, uh, it buys me some time to just virtually hammer something out and get to the next level with the work that I made the wrong choice of colors on. Um, with something like currently right now, it's important that I try to stick with a budget of a show. Um, you know, it's one thing to be extravagant if you have the money and virtually when you're mapping out a show, you know, it can be expensive on the artist part. <sighs> so you want to make sure that you have a budget or some sort of schedule of what you, you're allowing yourself um, to, to, you know, um, because if framing can actually be very, very expensive, it could be a third or half of what the artwork is going to cost and professional framing. And, uh, you know, 
lately I've been going to um, uh, car boot sales and flea markets and, and things like that to see about if I can find some sturdy frames that I could upcycle. And I, I found some that I'm like, okay, this could work. And, uh, you know, it's nice to know that uh, I can do this. And it's just one more task, but I do tend to make a slight schedule of like how I'm going to map it out. So therefore I know, you know, the start date, to you know when I'm supposed to fit, complete the work and then when I'm supposed to actually deliver it um, because in my head that you know my my clock is ticking and I just want to make sure that again I deliver on time and that um, one thing I have to say about when I'm doing this in the studio is that pressure can c create diamonds and I do tend to like that hum of the the thrill of trying to get everything on, in crunch time. Um, but at the same time, I do try to allow myself some breathing space to, to not overdo it all the time. You know, you know, one or two days a week, my, I was like, okay, then I thought, you know, step back a bit. It's like, just pace yourself. Um, but that's when, you know, I tend to virtually be, the structured genius might, come with me and um, when I'm planning a budget and, and the schedule that tends to virtually make the vacuum to where that, that creative spark can just be amplified, um, which is nice. I, I do like that. Um, one of the other things that I find is that at the end of the day, uh, you know, it's just me and the brushes and, and the paint and I turn off the music. I feel a sense of accomplishment because I've finished something for the day. I'm closer to my goal. Uh, you can't buy that. And it's a nice feeling to know that, you know, you've done something productive and that you're, you're focused on a, a path and you're working towards a piece that you can actually see coming to, to light. Uh, it feels like you've just ran a marathon and you've, like, you've accomplished something and it's 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 a great feeling um, with certain th things within a day um, you know if I have to run out and get supplies or uh, I'm running low on a color or you know um, the other day I ran out of liquid so I had this delivered uh, liquid original uh, 500 milliliters um, I think this was 25 bucks uh, you know my other one is just uh, this is a uh, liquid light gel so um, you can see different sizes but um, normally uh, you know when I go into art supply stores and I venture out I have to really check myself again back to budget I you know I have to make sure that I just don't start throwing things into my uh, basket and just like my my budget is, spirals out of control. Um, when I'm when it's that case, I, I go through the keep it simple, stupid kiss method and the skimp versus splurge. Um, splurge is things like liquid and certain paints where you know I want them archival. Um, I'm not going to virtually cut corners on that. Like things like canvases, but um, one thing I will do normally. Hold on. Um, normally, I tend to get uh, frame protectors or corner protectors for pieces. Normally, um, they would go like this. I'd get a bar, and I would put this on the end of the canvas or the actual uh, picture frame to protect it from being dinged and and things like that or chipping. Um, but at the Dollar Tree, I found these pool noodles that I virtually cut in sections and split and virtually they sit perfectly at the ends and a lot thicker than this. These I think would be 60 for a bag of say uh, 50. Um, whereas this, uh, I, I think would be five feet tall and it would be a dollar twenty five and I could get maybe six pieces out of this for a dollar twenty five as opposed to 
a bunch of these and if you see a uh, big difference I'm like you know so that, that skimp versus splurge you have to be smart because you're virtually looking at your work you want to create protect it as well as protect it and so that can you know you have to ask yourself, do I need it if I use it is, it is it worth it for this you know things like paints and colors uh, pigments are essential um, you know and you you can mix high and the low end but um, that's how I go about it when I go into the art supply stores um, and because of where my parents are located I have to have a lot of stuff delivered you know unfortunately I'm not um, as close to England as I'd like to be because I have my favorite stores there where I would go to Great Art in Shoreditch uh, or Atlantis and and East London and um, you know or uh, Cass Art but uh, I, I love going to I mean here Blick is pretty good so and I'm not sponsored by any of these these companies but um, you know I know what I like to use and I know what I look for um, when I'm buying so you know sc uh, skimp versus, uh, versus splurge so just be savvy um, as for an artist tip um, take a time out uh, when you feel you deserved one. I mean, don't, I don't want to say, you know, working out, go, oh, I'm tired. And um, you want to get in the habit of getting a, a good working habit. Um, and, you know, for me, that could be take, taking just a couple of hours to go, okay, you know, uh, I, I put in 30, 40 hours within the week and um, I'm going to take, you know, uh, some time out I read or you know for your friends to like recharge your battery um, normally if because I'm always like in, in show mode sometimes or, or, or work mode I, I want to do something that isn't arty um, and just take time out for myself I, sometimes I'll treat myself to a lovely meal or just you know go to the cinema see go see a show or a gig with my friends and just get hang out and just you know, spend time with them um, but it's imperative that you find a balance so that you virtually can keep going. Um, let me know what you guys think. And I hope you find this uh, informative and um, helpful to you. Uh, let me know your likes and comments or what type of videos you'd like to see in the comments below. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you know all the updates of when I'm uploading. Um, until then, guys, look after yourselves and take care. All right? Thanks. Bye.